Today we're going to talk about structural-based drug design, which is a great application of chemical structure and intermolecular forces, which we just finished covering in class. Um, so first of all, what is a drug? So a drug, um, many of you have encountered drugs in your everyday life, prescription drugs or over-the-counter drugs, um, and they work to um, alleviate symptoms of a disease or illness in most cases. But in um, chemical terms, what a drug is is a molecule that binds to another molecular target in order to alter its function. And usually that target is an enzyme. So normally, if we look down here at this picture, we have in purple the enzyme, and then um, above it here is um, a substrate. So substrate is just a small molecule that binds to a protein. Okay, and so there's two different ways drugs can work. Uh, the first is as a competitive inhibitor. So if we design a drug that binds in this region, then our normal substrate can no longer bind. All right, um, and the other thing that it, we could do is do non-competitive in inhibition. So if this here is our drug, um, maybe it alters the shape of the enzyme in such a way that this can no longer bind um, in its active site where it used to. So this is um, how drugs work. <clears throat> and so... Um, what is an enzyme? So now that we know what the drug is going to do, how does it actually accomplish that? So enzymes are just proteins which are made up of nitrogen, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and sulfur molecules, all things we've talked about in class. They're just much, much bigger than any of the structures that we've drawn. And so um, what we have here, the primary structure, looks very similar to uh, what you've seen um, in class in terms of Lewis structures. So each of these lines represent bonds, and the lone pairs aren't shown, but you know that oxygen has lone pairs that would be there. Um, and so this, um, this protein structure can make three-dimensional structures. Um, like in the secondary structure, it can fold up um, and use hydrogen bonding, like these dashed, dotted lines here, to form secondary structures like alpha helices or beta sheets. And you probably learned about these in biology last year. Okay, um, and then those structures fold up and make um, combinations of structures that we call either tertiary structures or sometimes those even combine with other um, strings of um, protein um, to make quaternary structures. Okay, and so the thing about these being made up of just individual atoms, just like all the molecules we've been looking at, is that they can make interactions. So if we have an oxygen here and that has a slight negative charge, if we made a substrate that had um, a slight positive charge, then we could get an interaction here like a dipole-dipole interaction. Okay, so um, the idea with rational drug design or structure-based drug design is that it takes our knowledge of structure and interactions to design better drugs. So here on the left we have a structure bound um, in an enzyme and we know it binds, and so if scientists know the structure of that and know something about the structure of the protein, they can make changes that would improve the binding of that substrate in the pocket and make it a more effective drug. So for example here, uh, this, um, let me make it white so you can see a little better, this region of our protein um, has just water molecules bound in there that are making hydrogen bonds to the protein. If we redesigned our, um, our drug, so that we have groups there that are capable of hydrogen bonding or capable of electrostatic interactions, then we could improve how well it binds into that pocket. Um, so looking at the interactions that are formed and other ones that could potentially be formed can help us design better drugs. So what do we need to make a good drug? There are two factors that affect how well a drug works. Uh, the first is affinity. So affinity is how tightly a drug binds to its molecular target, and obviously the tighter the drug binds, the more effective it's going to be because you would need less of it to bind just as much of the, the target. And the second is selectivity, and that's how well a drug binds to our intended target and not to other targets. Um, so selectivity is an important factor in side effects. So um, if a drug is likely to bind to other proteins, it's going to have other unintended consequences, and that's not good. So we want a drug that has high affinity and high selectivity. All right, so um, this, I hope you see, is a, a good application of what we've done so far in class and a real-world example of how we would use this information. And we're going to do an activity in class tomorrow that will give us a little bit more information about how um, these, these structure-based approaches can work.